coming out of that call, it was just like, there's no magical bailout that's going to happen here. We just got to make the hard decisions to cut back and get really, really smart about where we're at. And that's what we did. In that time, I, I would compare myself to other people. I would watch other entrepreneurs building businesses and I, I would think, what's wrong with me? What, what's, what's wrong? Am I uh, inferior in some way? It, can I ever do this? You know, can I be an entrepreneur? I'm curious what your perspective is on this. I remember, so from the ages of 18 to 27, I tried starting nine different businesses, a uh, combination of uh, clothing line, landscaping business, tax lien investing business, all sorts of things, and kept failing, 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 failing. I didn't understand a lot of things about myself at that point. Um, but then finally buying my first franchise was the the catalyst. I just kind of needed a blueprint to start, but... I in that time I I would compare myself to other people. I would watch other entrepreneurs building businesses and I I would think what's wrong with me? What what's what's wrong? Am I uh inferior in some way? It, can I ever do this? You know, can I be an entrepreneur? And it created a tremendous amount of doubt, uh depression, all sorts of, you know, ch suffering in, in a sense. So for you, when you look back at the roller coaster of your entrepreneurial journey, what would you say has been the most challenging experience that you've been through? And how did you get to the other side, both, both mentally and yeah. emotionally and tactically? Man, for me, it was probably 2008, 2009 timeframe. And the reason is because in the early stages, the first few companies that I started, I mean, even the first three or four, like at that point in time, like I was too dumb to know any different. I didn't have much to lose. So it was easy to just go all in and try and figure it out on the way. By the time 2008, 2009 rolled around, I had lots to lose. And suddenly the world changed almost overnight. And, you know, we had solved problems over the years in the business by just throwing more people and more resources at it because we hadn't built our skills as entrepreneurs enough yet to know how to think smartly about those things. And that works when you're growing at a really incredible clip. But then overnight when things shift, there was, um, for us, it took many, many months for us to recognize the reality of, hey, this is not just going to magically get better next month. The world is not just going to be in a place where everyone's got a job and the economy's back uh, functioning at a good level and the stock market's in a good place. So we had to make some tough decisions. And I remember at one point, Tarek, we were on a conference call with a group of attorneys and we were trying to explore, like, what would it look like to do a bankruptcy reorganize, uh, reorganization, right? Because at the time we were managing payables, like on a weekly basis, like who can we not pay versus who we need to pay, right? Managing that sort of cash flow thing. So we're talking to these attorneys and they're giving us all the details. And I remember at the end of the call, I leaned over and I said, well, can you guys help us understand what is this gonna cost and how does the structure of that payment work? And they said, well, for us to get started, you're gonna have to give us a $50,000 retainer. And I kind of laughed and I was like, Dave, you realize like we can't afford to go bankrupt. Like that's ironic, if anything. Um, but it was really a blessing because I think coming out of that call, it was just like, there's no magical bailout that's going to happen here. We just got to make the hard decisions to cut back and get really, really smart about where we're at. And that's what we did. If you enjoyed this short clip from the podcast, you can check out another short clip right here. Or if you want to watch the full episode of this podcast, you can watch that here. And remember, knowledge is not power. It's applied knowledge that's power. Take care. Have a great rest of your day.